Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And if you're watching this video, you are more likely than not a hateful bigot. At least according to the Mary Sue, and even the numbers that they quote are quite hilarious because they really do point to the fact that these people have no idea what they're talking about and are just trying to spin this stuff to try and make noise when in reality there really is no story to be said. But anyway, this is another Mary Sue, yes! Oh, the Mary Sue, one of the greatest websites of all time, one of the most prestigious websites of all time. So prestigious that you can't even leave a mean comment because they have protected speech on their website. So, yeah, just stay away from them. But anyway, guys, uh, Rebecca Harrison is back at it once again saying, Why is Star Wars inclusiveness getting so much hate now when it was celebrated in the past? Really? Are you kidding me? Are you are you kidding me? This to me is just oh my goodness, this is just so freaking ridiculous. So basically what they're trying to say is that there are a bunch of racists out there and that people the reason why the reason why people don't like the new Star Wars is because of inclusiveness, because of diversity. No. The problem is terrible characters and also the fact that they are trying to force diversity at the sake of good characters. They are making Rey a strong character just because. She has no real backstory. She has no reason for being good at the Force, good at lightsaber fighting, anything more than just she is a character who happens to be good, but she's also a woman. And so basically it's the mindset of, oh, we have to make this strong female character because we're new and we're new aged and we're nuanced and everything. No. No, you're just making a really bad character, and oh my goodness, this is just, oh man, this is already getting off to a start. But also, guys, I just want you to, I just, I, this first paragraph to me, whoa, I jumped on me. What happened? This first, first paragraph to me just reveals everything. It actually talks about the data that I mentioned in a previous video about how there really isn't a whole lot of racism or, or sexism out there. It's just this perceived reality. I mean, obviously, does it exist? Sure. But it's a very, very small minority of people. So anyway... Here we has last week, Professor Bethany Lacina published research revealing some important, if unsurprising, data about Star Wars fans. <gasps> what? What information was revealed? Using algorithms to analyze tweets. Analysts? Analysts? Tweets about Star Wars The Last Jedi Lacina found that while only 6% of all tweets contained offensive language. <gasps> 6%? Oh my god, guys. 6% of tweets about The Last Jedi contained offensive language. That's actually, that's actually much lower than I thought because offensive language uh, could be cursing. Uh, it could be a variety of things. And only 6% of tweets about The Last Jedi actually had offensive language in it. That's actually really impressive. That's actually a good number. I mean, only 6%? That's amazing. Oh, man. And just 1.1% evidenced hate speech, including ethnic, misogynistic, and homophobic slurs. The results were worse when gender and race of their targets came into play. So this whole article... This entire article, this entire premise, everything that they're jumping on, the Kelly Marine trans situation, everything with Star Wars about how, oh, Star Wars fans are racist, sexist, misogynistic, etc., is all based on the fact that with The Last Jedi, which is the most polarizing and most divisive film, keep that in mind, like 50-50% split when it comes to most fans, 6% said anything using offensive language, and guess what? That could be offensive in the positive or negative. Only 6% according to this person's magical algorithm. And then 1.1% perceived evidence, as they say, hate speech. Now, I would really like to know, what do they consider to be hate speech? Would Mary Sue be counted among that? Calling Ray a Mary Sue, calling her an undeveloped character? Would that, would they include that as being hate speech? Or was it just people using these slurs? Because if it's just people using these slurs, even 1.1% is very small. That is so insignificant. Again, is it bad? Yes. I don't like when people use racial slurs. I don't like when people use any type of actual hate speech. Though, of course, the definition of hate speech these days seems to be getting quite broad by the very fact that just by having Mary Sue in the title of my video or just having Mary Sue as a descriptor for one of my videos, it's automatically put into this uh, the program that I use, uh, TubeBuddy. It automatically says, this might be offensive language. The fact that just calling a character Mary Sue, which is a term that can be described and used for both men and women characters, does not matter. Uh, the fact that that's now considered hate speech to me 
makes me question even this 1.1%, how many of those people actually use racist slurs? How many of those people actually use sexist slurs? And again, if they did, and they use that kind of hate speech, guess what? That's despicable. But you're trying to tell me that you're trying to act like there's this huge deal, this huge epidemic of, of mass proportions, and yet you're talking about 1.1% of tweets. Of tweets. And that's also, take, take, keep in mind that only 6% had offensive language. Oh, go, gosh darn it. I just can't believe 6%. Oh, that's outrageous. 6% of all tweets on Twitter and the Twitterverse. Only 6% had offensive language. That's really, guys, I have to say, if you've been tweeting about The Last Jedi, kudos to you because, I mean, 90, that means 94% of tweets about The Last Jedi did not have offensive language. And that also means that, what, 98.2%, I can't do math, 98.2 plus percent of people didn't use racist slurs? That's, a, that's, that's like, what's, let's flip that. That's amazing. That's really good. It, and also it proves the point that we've been trying to make that it's a very, very small minority of people. This isn't even just fandom menace people. This isn't even just including f Star Wars, uh, fans of Star Wars. This is all tweets. This is all tweets about Star Wars The Last Jedi and only 6% offensive language. 1.1%. Possible racism, possible sexism. Again, the question of what kind of words they, they define as being hate speech, again, it could easily change that number quite a bit. But it's about right. About 1%. I, I believe that number. That sounds about right. So you're telling me that 1% of tweets drove, or 1% of comments, because this is just Twitter, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is holding true in other areas too. So 1%, this supposed 1% of actual racist sexes, that's what drove Kelly Marie Tran off social media. But guess what? It didn't. Because if you actually read, if you actually, Mary Sue, if you actually took the time to read what Kelly Marie, what Kelly Marie Tran wrote in her article, she not only calls out people uh, who, are, who are negative in this way, but guess what? She also calls out the media, you people, and also she calls out Hollywood, saying that it's a pervasive problem in both the media and Hollywood. So to me, you are just trying to use, one, you're using garbage numbers because even like what defines hate speech and abusive language is still calling into question. But even then, even if you were to take these numbers at face value, 6% for offensive language and 1.1% for supposed hate speech, are you kidding me? Those are the numbers that you're trying to throw at us? And then they try and say, oh, but wait a minute, if you, if you, if you, if you narrow the results, it gets even more disturbing. So in tweets about Asian American actress, of course, they have to put Asian American. Why, why are you defining her as Asian American? Why does her race matter so much? You racist? Actress Kelly Marie Tran or her, or, or her character Rose Tico, again, very, very specific there, offensive language doubled to 12%. 12%. And hate speech rose to 1.8%, a 0.7%, 0.7% gigawatts. Great Scott, that's just insane. Similarly, whereas one in 450 tweets directed at male podcasters contain hate speech, the figure was one in 280 for women. Oh my god. It has not, could it have anything to do with the fact that Rose Tico was a terribly written character and they were probably saying, F this character? No, it couldn't possibly have anything to do with that. And that 0.7% hate speech. Again, how do you define hate speech? <laughs> That, that is something that's very important. That is something very important because, again, there's actual hate speech. Again, racial slurs, actual sexism, and then there's being critical of a character. And so if you're trying to conflate the two, that's a problem. But, again, the fact that you're trying to – oh, my God, can you believe the statistics on this, guys? It doubles. That's a 6% to 12%. That's a doubling of a – oh, my gosh, it doubles for offensive language. And, oh, my God, it rose by 0.7%. Oh my goodness, I'm like losing my breath because I just, oh my, I'm so disturbed that there is so much hate out there. One in 450 at men, one in 280, the wage gap, oh my god, the tweet gap, guys. We thought the wage gap was bad, but now there's a tweet gap. Oh my goodness gracious, this is just a Star Wars fan's online bullying of Tran, oh my god. Fellow actress Daisy Ridley and co-star Chime Boyega. Yeah, because Daisy Ridley, she got bullied because she's a woman. It has nothing to do with the fact that she made some stupid comment about guns. Nothing to do with that. And John Boyega has nothing to do with the fact that he's been trolling fans forever. Has nothing to do with that. I wonder, what are her, what are their stats? Oh my god, I bet if she's doubled, they must be like tripled. It must be like one, must be like 2.1%. Oh my goodness gracious. 
According to Lucina's data, the culprits are purport the culprits. Yes, that's right, because they're culprits. They're they're already guilty. They're tried, convicted, and guilty of murder. Oh my goodness, suggests that the Phantom has a serious problem with racism and sexism. 1.8%! 1.1%! And that shows us that there's a problem with racism and sexism. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't even read that line seriously. This suggests the fandom has a serious problem with racism and sexism at 1.1 and 1.8%. You are making, Mary Sue, you okayed this article, this garbage tier article that's not based in reality, that's using terrible statistics. Oh my goodness, this is just, this is beautiful. Uh, according to Lucinda's data, the culprits, uh, the culprits again, proportionally few in number, are few in number, exactly. However, their impact, yes. So again, they, they, oh my goodness, this writer actually says, well, according to Lucina, Lucina's, so first they say, this suggests that the fandom has a serious, so, so first it suggests the fandom has a serious problem with racism and sexism. Again, I don't know how that they get that out of 1.1 and 1.8%, because if you're talking about actual racist and sexist, because again, you even said it yourself, that offensive language was not included, in that second statistic. So again, there's they, they are obviously making a difference there, but even in that 1.1, 1.8%, nothing's very clear about what constitutes that. But then you say that there's a serious problem based on that 1%, and then you say, according to Lucina's data, the culprits are proportionally few in numbers. So then you say the exact opposite of what you just said, and then you try and justify your point by saying, however, their impact, driving Tran and Ridley off social media, again, we have to look at each situation. Tran does not just blame random people, random racists and sexists. She blames Hollywood and the media as being a part of this culture that she doesn't want to be a part of anymore. And Ridley, the reason why she got driven off social media, again, you're, you're just, you're twisting everything, was because she made a stupid comment about a uh, political matter, about guns, about American gun law. That's why she got driven off social media, not because of racist and sexist. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. Oh, and here it goes, and here it goes, and once again, trying to rewrite history, trying to rewrite everything to try and fit their narrative, he, and this is going to be like, I can't go any much further into this because this is just so bad. However, their impact driving Tran, it's really off social media, and reportedly leaving Jar Jar Binks actor Ahmad Best suicidal following a backlash against his character in the fandom menace is enormous. No, even Ahmed Best came out very clearly and admitted that he was suicidal. But guess what? He blamed the media because guess who attacked his character the most? It was the media because the media called his character racist. The media called his character a racist caricature. They're the ones that went after. The media went after him. And he even admits that saying it was the media, the constant nonstop attention from the media that drove him to that point. So once again, now, not only are they just twisting numbers and trying to say 1% is somehow a, an epidemic, but now also they're trying to take a situation where it's been very clearly stated that it was the media's involvement and the media's fault, and now they're trying to flip it and say, oh, obviously you can see the fandom has a very serious racist and sexist problem. And as it says, is enormous. The impact is enormous. That 1% is an enormous impact. Like, guys, the numbers might seem small, but I swear, I absolutely swear, the, the, the impact is absolutely enormous, everybody. So who is sending the abuse and why are they so angry? Good Lord. So again, I have to stop there because at this point, there's just no way that, I mean, oh, middle-aged men, middle-aged white men, I'm sure they're the, they're the biggest problem. And now we see, now they're trying to make the point, okay, I can see what they're trying to do. They're trying to say, but they haven't had a problem with, 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 with uh, diversity in the past, what's going on now? You want to know why there's 6%, uh, what was it again? Yeah, 6% offensive language. It's because, and that's extremely low. I'm actually quite impressed with Twitterers these days, people, Twitterers, tweeters these days for actually being able to stay that low, being able to stay that contained because I expected that number to be a lot higher because again, if you're talking about people cursing, there are people cursing nonstop on Twitter every single day. And if you're trying to say that all tweets that dealt specifically with The Last Jedi, that only 6% of them had that kind of language in there. And also again, that is including, I don't know what your stipulation is for offensive language because again, Mary Sue could be considered offensive. So that's just amazing to me. And then you try and spin 1.1 and then a giant spike to 1.8%. To try and say that somehow that there's this racism and sexism and that, oh, but if you look at Kelly Marie Tran's character, Rose Tico, the, the, the offensive language jumps up to 12%. But again, how do you find offensive language? And secondly, too, when it comes to that, most of them are being angry and most of them are talking about the character of Rose Tico, who objectively speaking is a terribly written character. So... Mary Sue, before you try to throw out stats, before you try to make a point based on nothing and, and try and act like something, like, I'm sorry, but I don't understand who is, oh my goodness gracious, I am just, oh, my mind is broken by the fact that this 
person at the Mary Sue and the Mary Sue in general writes these articles and they try and act like they're so um, meticulous and they try and sound like they're so su- they're they're pseudo intellectual types and they're oh yes well you just one point one percent is quite large oh my gosh there's a tweet gap. It's just all nonsense. And this is, again, this is when identity politics, this is when SJW nonsense gets taken to the extreme. And if you want the world and society to end up like this article, then keep pushing these ideas forward. Keep allowing these things to happen and keep, you know, letting these people live in their fantasy world. If not, come join us in the real world and call out this nonsense. But anyway, guys, what are y'all's thoughts on the Mary Sue? Do you think that there is a racism and sexism problem and epidemic in Star Wars? I mean, with numbers like 1.1 and 1.8%, you have to say... I mean, it has to at least be talked about, right? I mean, the impact, too, has just been enormous, driving people who make comments about guns and people who blame the media off social media, and somehow that's the fandom's fault. But yeah, let me know your comments below. I'd really love to hear that. Also, guys, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe. It really does help me a lot. Y'all guys are absolutely amazing. This was a fun one today. Hope you guys liked it. So anyway, guys, have a great day, and as always, God bless. And Rose Tico, Rose Tico, you are amazing, just not a good character. Have a good one, guys.